Hello everyone, welcome to Compliance for All live webinar on clinical trials in US, Europe and Canada. My name is Ron and I'm going to be your host for today's session. On behalf of the Compliance for All team, I'd like to thank you all for being part of this event. Today's webinar will be presented by Anne Tomlin. A few words about Anne before we could start off today's session. Anne Tomlin has practiced exclusively in the areas of regulatory affairs since 1971. She has a strong background in business, government, regulations, and reimbursement policies. Anne is a graduate of York University and holds a BA degree in English from the year 1970 and a BS degree in chemistry um, from the year 1980. Anne has received a regulatory affairs certification from the Regulatory Affairs Professional Society for U.S. Regulatory Affairs in the year 1997. European Regulatory Affairs in the year 2001, and Canadian Regulatory Affairs 2005, and founded Therapeutic Products Inc. In the, uh, in the month of September 2013. TPI Reg is a regulatory affairs boutique, firm specializing in Canadian regulatory affairs. We are honored to have such a distinguished person, such as Anne, with us to present today's webinar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, I would like to inform you of the program outline for this training session. This webinar is for 16 minutes duration. First, Anne will take you through today's webinar, highlighting the areas that will be covered, and she will then share with you her presentation. We would like to inform all our participants. Once you're part of this teleconference, your phone lines will be placed in mute and would remain so until the Q&A window begins towards the end of the webinar. And if for any reason you get logged out of this training session or teleconference, please follow the same procedure to join in again. And now that we are all ready to start, I request Anne to take it from you. Anne? Thank you very much, Ron. I'm very pleased to be able to be here to uh, speak about clinical trials in the United States, Europe, and Canada. Um, so we're going to, uh, to get going at this stage, and um, our agenda is going to essentially look at conducting clinical trials. We'll start in Canada, then we'll move to the United States, and then we'll move outside of North America to Europe. Um, and we'll finish with a comparison across the three jurisdictions. So to start in Canada, um, when is a clinical trial application, uh, which is the name of the application that's required to get approval required? Uh, it's required for clinical trials in phases one through three. Uh, this includes uh, trials that are not uh, trials for products that are not yet marketed, or trials uh, for marketed products where the use is outside of our approved labeling, which is referred to as the product monograph. It also applies to trials done by hospitals or ac academic individuals, um, as well as to companies. When is a clinical trial application not required? for phase four clinical trials or in the actual practice of medicine by a physician when they're treating a patient. So clinical trials in Canada are approved through a clinical trial application. Um, the clinical trial application is, is approved within a 30-day period. And what's important to understand um, is that each trial, each protocol, requires its own clinical trial application. So unlike in the United States, which we'll get to in a minute where you have an IND and you add protocols to the IND, in Canada, um, each protocol um, is its own clinical trial application, which is very similar to Europe as well. Um, in Canada, there is um, uh, an exemption from the 30-day approval, um, and this is for phase one studies that are conducted in healthy uh, human adults. And the target here is to review comparative bioavailability trials and phase one trials in healthy adult volunteers within seven days. And there are some exceptions that you can see there on the slide for um, uh, more advanced therapies, if you will. Um, you cannot start the trial until you receive a no-objection letter. Um, for the most part, they do make the seven days, and this was an attempt to, uh, to keep the uh, CRO business focused on phase one trials viable uh, from a business perspective in, in Canada. 
Um, so if you're from the United States, which I think most of you are, um, you'll probably be very familiar with pre-IND uh, meetings. In Canada, we have uh, pre-CTA consultations. And these can be requested at any time and are particularly useful if your product is a new chemical entity or if you're looking at a complex study that you may want to uh, discuss with Health Canada before you file the clinical trial application. It's also useful for sponsors who have never filed in Canada before, so it's, it's useful to actually you know, touch the people a little bit at Health Canada that will be reviewing your protocol um, and that will, uh, you, you'll be having an ongoing conversation with as the trial progresses. Um, the sponsor, generally speaking, presents data and gets input from Health Canada. Uh, meetings in Canada are two hours in duration uh, for the most part, and generally speaking, there is an expectation that you're going to present some background on, on the product and some background on the study you want to do, and that you will have some questions that you want to discuss with Health Canada. So um, within um, Canada, we, we have, um, uh, as in the United, well, we, we have two different groups that review small molecules and biologics. So small molecules are reviewed by a group within Health Canada called the Therapeutic Products Directorate and shortened TPD. Um, biologics are reviewed by a group that I'll show you in the next slide. And what I want to show you on this slide is the number of clinical trial applications that are submitted and approved. And so the very top line on the slide shows you the number of clinical trial applications that are submitted, and the line just below that shows you the number of clinical trial applications that are approved. So what you can take from that is almost all clinical trial applications that are submitted are approved. There are some that are not. Um, the bottom two lines that is, are very close to zero show you the number that are withdrawn by the company or are rejected by Health Canada. Now, generally speaking, if, they, if there is an intent to reject your application, your clinical trial application, they will call you first and say, we're having some difficulty approving this, uh, this is the problem that we're having, and either you're going to have to make this substantial change or you withdraw the clinical trial application. Um, and most companies choose to withdraw so that they're not in a, a position where they have to tell other governments that they've been rejected by Canada. Um, within TPD, it's also uh, important to understand that your clinical trial application will go to a, a department that handles clinical trials and only clinical trials. So whether the clinical trial is for uh, an oncology product, an ophthalmology product, whether it's an oral contraceptive, no matter what the product, what the indication for the product is, as long as it's a small molecule, it's going to go to this CTA department, uh, or what we refer to as the Office of Clinical Trials. You can also see that they receive about 1,200 applications a year, so um, you can divide that out. That's about, I guess, about 100 a month, which would be about 25 a week, uh, which would be about four a day that have to get um, approved. And so it's a very efficient machine that goes through things very, very efficiently. Um, if we turn now to the biologic group, the biologic group is called the Biologic and Genetic Therapies Directorate. And if we look at their clinical trials, the top line again shows you the number that were submitted, the next line the number that were approved. Again, most, see almost all CTAs that are submitted are approved. And the bottom two lines shows you the number that are withdrawn or rejected. Um, if you look at this, there's about 300 applications that are submitted and approved by the Biologic Therapies, uh, Biologic and Genetic Therapies Directorate, um, and that works out to uh, you know slightly um, to to a lot less per day than the, than the small molecule area. Um, the, the clinical trials are, go to different groups of people depending on whether they might be a monoclonal antibody, for example or a vaccine. Um, so there is a little bit of division of clinical trials within the biologics group. If we look at the number of bioequivalent studies, these are the seven-day studies that are submitted in the range of maybe 650 or so um, currently. 
If we look across the phases of clinical trials, uh, this is again for small molecules. Uh, the, the yellow bar shows you the number that are approved. In